At Boulder Mountain, our mission is to make disciples as we help people find and follow Jesus. And we have a baptism coming up on Sunday, October 13th. It's one of the most exciting days that we have as a church, is celebrating individuals who have found Jesus, have a personal relationship with Jesus. They place their faith and trust in him, and they've said yes to him. They've given their life to him. And now baptism is an opportunity for them to make that decision public. So I want to talk to you about what baptism is and is not. Baptism in the Bible is a public expression of an inward decision or an inward reality. Throughout the Bible, faith always precedes baptism. The baptism does not save us. It is an act of obedience. It's Jesus who saves us. And so there's nothing special about the water or the act in general. It is an act of obedience. And so let me challenge you, if you've not, since you've given your life to Jesus, been baptized, made your decision public, uh, put that flag in the sand and say, I am a follower of Jesus. Let me invite you to consider being baptized at Boulder Mountain on Sunday, October 13th. You can have a spouse or a friend or family member, a small group member uh, baptize you. I've seen children baptize their parents. Um, And so uh, that is allowed at, at Boulder Mountain. One of the best ways I, or illustrations I've come across when it comes to baptism is it's similar. The illustration I use is similar to a wedding ring. Uh, I wear a wedding ring. It symbolizes the covenant relationship that I have with my wife. But the ring doesn't make me married. It's just a symbol. And it, when I take the ring off, I'm, I'm still married. So baptism is a, it's a public expression uh, again, it's an act of obedience, but in the Bible, faith always precedes baptism. One of the questions I get often is, well, I was already baptized or sprinkled as an infant by, by a priest. Maybe you grew up in a, uh, a tradition that was Presbyterian or Catholic where that was the form of baptism. So let me just talk to you about that. That was a really significant moment for your parents. When your parents had you baptized or sprinkled, you didn't have a say in that. It was an important moment for your parents to, most of the time, it's, it's saying our desire is to raise this child in a covenant relationship to Jesus, to point them into a relationship with Jesus. And so I know this is a sensitive topic with, with individuals, maybe in our church, when they have this conversation with their parents. So here's, here's how I would recommend you have that conversation. It does not mean that that baptism was null and void. That, that was a significant moment for your parents. But it wasn't your decision. At Boulder Mountain, we believe in what's called believer's baptism. So when you make that decision to follow Jesus, to give your life to Jesus, then you decide to be baptized. It's a personal decision. Baptism is personal. Somebody else doesn't make that decision for me. I, I choose that decision. And so rather than telling them it's null and void, I would have the conversation with your parents say, hey, this is fulfillment of your prayer and your desire for me. And so rather than it being void, it is a fulfillment of your prayer that you wanted me to grow up to have a relationship with Jesus. Well, now I've made that decision my own, right? Faith is not passed down. I don't have my parents' faith. They've influenced me, but I make that decision personally. And so if that was your tradition, let me encourage you to consider being baptized as a believer. In, uh, on, on October 13th. Uh, here's what Jesus has to say. The instructions given to the church, in our case, to Boulder Mountain. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. For those being baptized, we ask three questions. The first question is, have you given your life to Jesus? Second question is, do you trust him and him alone for the forgiveness of your sins? The third question, is it your desire to follow Jesus the rest of your life? And upon affirmation of those questions, we baptize you. You go down into the water, for I am crucified with Christ. I identify with his death. I come up out of the water, raised to walk in new life. So identify. It's a story in water what happens in baptism. We believe in immersion at Boulder Mountain. Jesus was baptized. 
He doesn't ask us to do anything that he himself didn't do. It's a beautiful picture. and We want to celebrate with you in your baptism. If you've already been baptized, let me encourage you to show up and celebrate with those who are being baptized. And, and ask. let me ask you, who's going to be in the water because, because of you? Who are you inviting? Uh, earlier this year, we prayed over uh, over 100 names that were brought to the front of the church, names that you wrote down. And we've been praying over those names, uh, names of family and friends, that they would come to know Jesus and one day they will be in the baptism tank. And can imagine, imagine you getting the privilege to baptize your friends or family members. Uh, let's, let's continue to pray for them. So Father, we, we pray for those who are being baptized, for those who are considering baptism, give them the courage to to follow through in what you're asking of them. God, I pray for every name that was written down on that board a couple months ago. We pray for their salvation. I pray that you would redeem them. You would call them out. Uh, they would come to a saving relationship in the person of Jesus. We ask this in your name. Amen. We wrap up the series Jesus and this week. Thank you for your questions. Thanks for reaching out to me on any number of topics from politics, agenda, abortion, kingdom of God. This week, Jesus and social justice. A lot of misunderstanding when it comes to justice in our world today, and we're going to look at what the Bible has to say. If you have a question, send it in. I would like to respond to some of the questions. I'll keep them anonymous. Your name will not be associated with the question, but send me some of those questions. Thanks for allowing us to go through this series. It's a little unique series, and we'll, um, we'll get back to walking through a passage of Scripture here soon. Live Nativity is coming to Boulder Mountain, so mark your calendars. I believe it's Saturday and Sunday, December 14th and 15th. Mark your calendars. Think of who you can invite. And if you'd like to participate, there's a place for you. We can connect you to the right people. Let us know if you would like to serve in any capacity for live nativity as we reach thousands of people in our community with the story of the love of Jesus. Good news of great joy for all people. Hey, have a great rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday as we wrap up Jesus and. Love you. Have a great week.